Hi, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with an illustration of how an investor can take a synthetically long position in a risky bond by using the credit default swap. To illustrate, for the risky bond, we'll use a five-year bond issued by IBM. IBM has a strong credit rating, so there is a very small chance of default, but there is some chance of default. So we can call it a risky bond. The investor on the right here is going to take an outright long position in the risky bond. So that means the investor purchases the bond, that's shown with the blue line, in exchange for receiving a yield indicated by the green line. That yield is going to be the risk-free rate or the riskless rate plus some premium for the risk that the investor is assuming. The investor is exposed to several risks really when the investor purchases a corporate bond outright, including credit risk of course. That's just the risk that the bond defaults. Also funding risk. The investor has to raise cash in order to purchase the bond. Interest rate risk or market risk. If the interest rate increases the value of the bonds gonna decrease even without the bond or the corporation that issued the bond defaulting and finally there may be some currency risk so collectively there's su significant exposure in the outright purchase of the corporate bond and so this yield is going to be above the riskless rate now let's compare that outright long position in the risky bond to a synthetic position. So in this case the investor on the right enters into two transactions. The first transaction is to purchase a riskless or risk-free instrument and that's typically the US Treasury. And so in this case the blue line is the purchase of that riskless instrument in exchange for the yield is only going to be the risk-free yield. Then the second transaction is the investor can sell a credit default swap or take a short position in the credit default swap. In which case the investor finds a counterparty who wants to buy protection on the reference obligation. The reference obligation is that same five-year corporate bond issued by IBM. But notice no lines are drawn here. Neither the investor nor the counterparty need to be invested into the corporate bond. So the counterparty is now buying protection on the corporate bond and so it pays to the investor the insurance premium so to speak, the CDS premium in the form of this yield indicated by the green line. So now the investor in terms of yield is in a similar position to the yield position as it was when it simply purchased the IBM bond outright. They get a riskless yield or the risk-free rate from the Treasury plus the CDS premium because they sold a credit default swap or they sold protection on that five-year corporate bond. Of course now they are as they are now synthetically long the risky bond that means just like in owning the bond outright they do have exposure to default because by selling the credit default swap they've guaranteed that they will issue or pay recovery or actually one minus recovery to the counterparty if there's a default so just to recap the potentially confusing terminology in regard to the investor here who has sold credit, the credit default swap to the counterparty this investor is short the credit default swap but at the same time we can also say the investor is long the reference asset or in this case the IBM bond they're long because they're exposed to the default on the bond Conversely, the investor who has sold the credit default swap to the counterparty, the counterparty is the protection buyer, they are long the credit default swap, 
which in this case is the same thing as being short the reference obligation or the risky asset. They're short the reference obligation because they transferred the credit risk away from themselves to the investor. And finally, some a really interesting difference between the outright long position that we saw before, which was, again was the purchase of the bond directly, and the synthetic exposure through the CDS, which is that the credit default swap allows the investor to assume or be exposed only to pure credit risk for the obligate for the uh, ri on the risky asset, as opposed to funding risk market risk and currency risk. So this can be a purer form, a more pure form of credit exposure to the reference obligation. So this is David Harper of the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.